Welcome back, guys. And we started this video of reading and discussing the very famous novel, the very famous story, The Little Prince by Antoni de saint Exupéry. Let's start reading this. Yeah, I think last time we completed two chapters, and now here we will begin with the three chapter. Or uh, this is here, the very picture of the prince is standing on the very edge of the hill or mountain or uh, hill or mountain. Let's start reading. It took me a long time. It took me a long time to understand where he came from. The little prince who asked me so many questions never seemed to hear mine. See, I think in last video, we found that that boy, little boy who appeared all of a sudden before that old man whose uh, airplane engine, airplane's engine had broken down. And uh, that child, that little prince continually asked to draw him, to draw for him uh, the picture or drawing of the sheep. Uh, let's continue the same again. It took me a long time to understand where he came from. The little prince who asked me many questions never seemed to hear mine. These are words spoken by chance that little by little have revealed all to me. So when he saw my plan for the first time, I will not draw my plan. It is a drawing too complicated for me. He asked me. What is that thing? It's not a thing, it flies, it's a plane. This is my plane. And I I was proud to tell him I was flying. Then he exclaimed, how, you have fallen from heaven? Yes, I said modestly. Ah, now that's funny. And the little prince had a very pretty burst of laughter, which irritated me very much. I wish to take my misfortunes seriously. Then he added, then you too come from heaven. What planet are you from? So the word typically in this sentence, heaven actually means the sky, the very galaxy actually. Okay, no, not heaven means the paradise, no way. I caught a glimpse in the mystery of his presence and I suddenly questioned. So the very question actually uh, uh, quite uh, seems quite mischievous to him that what is he talking about? So you're from another planet, the question uh, that old man asked. But he did not answer me. He nodded so swift, softly as he looked at my plane. It's true that you cannot come very far from it. And he sank into a reverie that lasted for a long time. Then taking my sheep out of his pocket, he plunged into the contemplation of his treasure. You can imagine how intrigued I was by this half-confidence about the other planets. I therefore endeavored to learn more. Where do you come from, my little fellow? Where is at home? Where do you want to take my sheep? He replied after a meditative silence. What is good with the box you gave me? Is that at night it will serve him as a house? Of course, if you are kind, I will also give you a rope to tie it up, to, up during the day and a pocket and a picket. The proposal seemed to shock the little prince. Attach it. What a funny idea. But if you do not tie him, he will go anywhere and he'll get lost. And my friend burst into laughter again. But where do you want him to go? Anywhere, right in front of him. Then the little prince gravely remarked, it does not matter, it is so small at home. And with a little melancholy, perhaps he added, straight ahead, you can not go far. That's the end of chapter. And now chapter four. I had learned a second very important thing that its original planet's planet was scarcely larger than a house. The very thing, the very idea of home, uh, the very idea that the little prince came from actually was not larger than a house. 
I could not surprise it could not surprise me much. I knew that besides the big planets like the Earth, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, or Venus, which have which have been given names, there are hundreds of others that are sometimes so small that it is very hard for them to see the telescope. When an astronomer discovers one of them, he names it as number. He calls it, for example, the asteroid three two five. Okay, this is the telescope. The astronomer looks at this one. Mm, quite fascinating picture, by the way. Quite uh, the picture that a child could understand easily. But a grown-up would find so many faults in this, uh, in this picture as well. I have serious reasons to believe that the, pla the planet from which the little prince came is the asteroid B612. He starts assuming things now. This asteroid was seen only once in 1909 by the Turkish astronomer in the telescope. See, the very cap also belongs to the Turkish culture. Good one. And then again here, the same gentleman from Turkish culture, or uh, Turkey, and uh, the picture uh, having some mathematical calculations, the very graph, the very... Mm, things uh, mathematical uh, things are depicted on that he had then made a great demonstration of his discovery at an international astronomy congress but nobody believed him because of his costume big people are like that look at this one wonderful idea they have given to us uh, he has given to us that nobody believed him because of his costume it's it's common in what we say mindset in so many other countries non-asian countries particularly that they don't consider brown people or people belonging to non-european areas uh worth consideration worth paying attention worth following and all that thing so quite fascinating idea again talking about the mindset of people two types of people who belong to non-european countries non-english countries and who belong to uh the european mindset okay so that turkish guy was not believed in because of his costume he, that looked alien to other people the big scholars the big people so-called fortunately for the reputation of the asteroid b612 a turkish dictator imposed on his people and a penalty of death to dress european this is quite uh, understandable i think if you could relate it with uh, the very era in which the turkish empire was demolished and there was uh, hit 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 to face fall down and the british colonial uh, colonialism was implemented was uh, uh, well empowered on the turkish area so that there the very dictator turkish dictator had imposed this uh, on the local people to wear or to trace European. The astronomer resumed his demonstration in 1912 in a very elegant dress. That means English dress uh, or European dress. And this time everyone was of his opinion. That means everyone believed in him. See the same guy without Turkish hate, without Turkish, what do we say, dress. If I have told you these details about the asteroid B612, uh, and if I have given you its number, it is because of the big people. Big people means the people in uh, that mindset who do not consider what uh, believing uh, in other cultures. Okay, big people like the numbers. When you tell them about a new friend, they never question you about the basics. They never tell you what is the sound of his voice? What games does he prefer? Does he collect butterflies? They ask, how old is he? How many brothers? How much does he weigh? How much does his father earn? Then they only think they know him. If you say to the grown-ups, I saw a beautiful pink brick house with geraniums on the windows and doves on the roof, they cannot imagine this house. We must say to them, I've seen a house of 100,000 francs then they cried, how pretty it is. <laughs> Wonderful mindset again. So if you said to them, the proof that the little prince existed in, is that he was delightful, that he laughed and that he wanted a sheep. When you want a sheep, it is proof that you exist. 
they will shrug their shoulders and treat you as a child. But if you tell them the planet where it came from is asteroid B612, B612, then they will be convinced and they will leave you alone with their questions. They are like that. We must not blame them. Children should be very lenient towards adults. Quite generous point, quite mature point, I think this is here. But of course, we who understand life make fun of the numbers. I would like I, I would have liked to start this story like fairy tales. I would have liked to say once upon a time there was a little prince who lived on a planet hardly larger than himself and who needed a friend. For those who understand life, it would have seemed much more true. Again, the point is focused here. For the people or the mindset that looks at life is life, colorful, attractive, fanciful, wonderful, amazing, bewitching, by the way. And there are people, grown up so called, big people so called, who look at the life from realistic point of view, from uh, what materialistic point of view, from mechanic point of view. So these two people are depicted here mostly. And of course, the very central theme of this novel, this story is also the clash or the contrast between the world looked upon by grown-ups and the world looked upon by the children. Let's continue. Because I do not like to read my book lightly, I feel so sorry to recount these memories. It's six years since my friend went away with his ship. If I try to describe it here, it is so as not to forget it. It's sad to forget a friend. Not everyone has had a friend. And I can become like the grown-ups who are interested only in numbers. So that's why I bought a box of colors and pencils. It's hard to go back to drawing at my age when no other attempt has ever been made than that of a closet closed bore and that of an open bore at the age of six. I will try, of course, to make portraits as resembling as possible, but I'm not quite sure I'm going to succeed. One drawing goes and the other does not look anymore. I make some errors also on the size. Here the little prince is too long, too big. There he's too small. I also hesitate about the color of his costume. Then I fumbled like this and that as best as, uh, as best I could. At last, I shall be mistaken about certain more important details, but that will have to be forgiven. My friend never gave an explanation. He thought I might be like him, but I unfortunately, do, I do not know how to see the sheep through the cracks. I may be a bit like grown-ups. I must have got older. This is the end of chapter four, but the most fascinating line and the very persuasive line here that given to us is, it is said to forget a friend. Not everyone has had a friend. Wonderful line, because most of the times on this planet are very much alone. People are alone. And people do not have friends who they can share their sorrows, griefs, thoughts, ideas, feelings even without any hesitation. So people are so much lonely. And in these two chapters, what I feel that people are so lonely that uh, at, 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 at this planet, in this planet Earth, that they are searching, discovering, looking for other planets in the sky or in galaxy to find a home mate. And this points out here that grown-ups are so lonely, no matter how many they are in the world, no matter if they are in a community or in a group or in a crowd or in a mob or in some sort of association or assembly, but they still feel alone and they don't have any friends. Not many people have friends. Okay, so wonderful idea. Let's end it here. And we'll start again with chapter five in the next video. Thank you so much for your time.